Monoidal Categories and Their Representations, Lecture 12, Coalgebras and Algebras in Monoidal Categories. Let us first recall the notion of a monoid. Definition, a monoid is a triple which consists of a set X, an associative binary operation on X denoted by asterisk, and a fixed element E in X, which is the identity element with respect to our binary operation. Alternatively, the same data can be described as follows. So X is an object of the category of all sets. Star or asterisk is a map from X times X to X. And E is a map from a fixed singleton consisting of dash to X. And this datum is supposed to satisfy the following conditions. The following diagrams should commute. We recall that set is a monoidal category with respect to the Cartesian product, and our dash is the identity element. So we can start from x times x and then times x. We can apply our operation asterisk in brackets and to go to x times x, and again applying the operation, we end up in x. Alternatively, we use the associator to go to x times x times x. Then we apply the asterisk in the brackets to go to x times x. And then we apply the asterisk and go to x. So this is the first diagram. The second diagram is that we start from x times our singleton. Applying the right unit or we end up in x. Alternatively, we apply our map E at the second argument to go to x times x, and then applying the operation, we end up in x. And we have a similar commutative diagram on the left. So this describes the notion of a monoid. Also, recall the notion of an associative algebra over some field k. An associative k algebra is a triple consisting of a vector space A over k, an associative and bilinear binary operation on A, let's also denote it by asterisk, and a fixed element 1 in A, which is an identity element with respect to this operation. Alternatively, now referring to the monoidal category of all k vector spaces, we can say that an associative algebra consists of an object A in the category of all k vector spaces, a linear map from A tensor over k with A to A, so this describes our operation asterisk, and a linear map eta from k to A, which sends the element 1 in k to our unit in the algebra A. And this datum is supposed to satisfy the following conditions. The following three diagrams should commute. So we have the usual associativity diagram. We start from A tensor A and then tensor A. We do the operation for the first two arguments and then the operation again to end up in A. Or we use the associator to rearrange the bracket. Then we do the operation on the second and the third arguments and then the operation and we end up to A and this should commute. And then we have the left and the right unitors. So for the right unitor, we start from A tensor over K with K. We apply row A to go to A. Alternatively, we apply eta for the second argument to go to A tensor A, and then we apply the operation and we end up in A. And this diagram should commute. And we have a similar diagram for the left unitor. So this summarizes the notion of an associative algebra. And since we see a clear similarity, we can generalize this notion to a setup of an arbitrary monoidal category. Let's see be a monoidal category with a tensor product, tensor product, the unital object i, the associator alpha, the left unitor lambda, and the right unitor rho. Definition, an algebra in C is a triple, which consists of an object A in C, a morphism mu, 
from A tensor A to A in C, and the morphism eta from the identity object to A in C. And this datum is supposed to satisfy the following conditions. The following three diagrams should commute. And we have exactly the same three diagrams as we saw on the previous two slides. The first diagram is associativity. We start from A tensor A and then tensor A. We apply mu to the first two arguments. We go to A tensor A, we apply mu, we end up in A. Alternatively, we rearrange the bracket, apply mu to the second and the third arguments, and they apply mu. So this diagram should commute, it represents the associativity of mu. And then we have the left and the right unitality diagrams, starting from A tensor the identity. We can apply the right unitor to go to A. Alternatively, we can apply eta to the identity factor. We end up at A tensor A. And here we can apply mu to go to A. So this diagram should commute. This is the right unitality diagram. And we have a similar left unitality diagram. Algebras in monoidal categories are known by various names. They are sometimes called algebra objects or monoids, or monoid object or internal monoids. And we already saw two canonical examples. Algebras in the monoidal category of all sets are exactly monoids. And algebras in the monoidal category of k vector spaces are exactly the associative k algebras. So here is a more involved example. Let K be a field and let A be a Frobenius finite dimensional associative K algebra. This means that we have a non-degenerate bilinear form on A, which is called the Frobenius form, which is associative in the sense that if we try to take a form of AB, C, the outcome should be equal to the form taken at a, comma, b, c. So this is the associativity condition for a Frobenius form on the algebra. And if an algebra has a Frobenius form, it's called a Frobenius algebra. Let E be a fixed idempotent in A. Let us consider the monoidal category of all finite dimensional AA bimodules. And in this category, take the object Q which is equal to the tensor product of the left module AE with the right A module E, A. If you take the tensor product over K, we get an AA bimodule. So this is a projective AA bimodule. Now let us define the map mu from Q tensor over AQ to Q as follows. If we evaluate this map mu at the element AE tensor EB, tensor CE, tensor ED, so this is an element from Q tensor over AQ. Then the outcome is AE tensor ED, so we take the left factor and the right factor, and we multiply it with a scalar given by the value of our Frobenius form at the pair EB, CE. The fact that this map is well defined follows from the associativity of the Frobenius form. So this middle tensor product is over A. We are supposed to freely move elements from A from left to right. And here it means moving the right factors of B to the left factors of C. This is exactly the condition of the associativity of the Frobenius form. And since this is well defined, directly from the definition, we see that this is a homomorphism of AA bimodules. We can multiply with A on the left, and with D on the right, and it will be a homomorphism. Okay, so now we have our multiplication mu. Let us define the unit. For this, we need to choose some bases. Choose some bases in A. The basis consisting of AIs, where I goes through some indexing set. And let AI star be the left dual basis in A with respect to the Frobenius form. So this means that the form taken at AJ star comma AI is equal to delta IJ. So this is a Kronecker symbol. Now define the bimodule map eta from the unit or the regular bimodule A to Q by sending one to the element sum over all I 
AI E tensor E AI star. Of course, we need to check that this is a well-defined map, which means that we need to check that if we multiply the image of one with any element A in A on the left, this will be equal to multiplying the image of one with the same element A on the right. So this will be some computation. So let us assume that A times the basis element AI is, this is of course an element in our algebra A, so we can write it as a linear combination of elements in our basis AI. So let the coefficients be Cij's. So A times AI is equal to the sum over J, Cij times Aj. Then, so Cij is the coefficient at Aj, so we can write it as the form taken at Aj star with A times Ai. So this is because the star is a dual basis. So this is how we can pinpoint our coefficient Cij. Now using the associativity, we can move A to the left and have that this is equal to the form taken at Aj star times A comma Ai. But then this means exactly that Aj star times A is equal to the sum over I Cij Ai star. And now if we do the computation on the both sides of this equality, we will see that both sides are equal to the following expression, the sum over all i and j, cij, aje times e ai star. And this completes the proof. So the map eta is a well-defined map of aa bimodules. And now we claim that the triple consisting of our AA by module Q, the multiplication mu, and the unit map eta is actually an algebra object in the category of all finite dimensional AA by modules. We need to check the axioms to check the associativity of mu. So we have the diagram which describes the associativity of mu. We just compute that both passes in this diagram, if you start from the element in this triple tensor product, which is Xe, tensor Ea, tensor Be, tensor Ec, tensor DE, tensor Ey, so this is a generating element of this triple tensor product. When we multiply, we should take the form at the pair of the elements, and regardless which way we do this, we will take a form at the pair Ea, Be, and at the pair EC and DE. So the outcome is XE tensor EY times the scalar given by the value of our Frobenius form at the pair EA comma BE and at the pair EC comma DE. To check the right unitality, we have this right unitality diagram. It is very easy to compute what happens if you start from this northwest corner and then go first east and then south. So we start from the element AE tensor EB tensor C, so this is a generating element here. Going east we do multiplication, so this is AE tensor EBC and going south is the identity. So east and then south sends our generating element to AE tensor EBC. And now we have to do the computation by going first south and then East. So let B times AI be the sum over all J, X, I, J times A, J. Due to the associativity of the Frobenius form, as we saw already a couple of slides ago, this is equivalent to saying that A, J star B is equal to the sum over all I, X, I, J times A, I star. Then, the south and then east pass in the diagram. So we start from AE tensor EB tensor C. We first apply our unit map to C and we go to sum over I, AIE times E AI star, and then times C on the right. And then we do the multiplication, which takes a form between EB and AEE. -E. So we get this element, sum over I of AE times EAI star C with the coefficient EB comma AIE, and then we take the Frobenius form.
So now we move B to the right, we have BAI, so we can use this formula to rewrite it as a sum over all i, j, x, i, j, and then the form between E and A, G, E, and then A, E tensor E, A, I star, C. Let's collect the summation over i on the right-hand side. X, i, j's are just scalars, we can move them to the right-hand side and use the bilinearity of the whole thing. And so on the right-hand side, we have the sum over i, x, i, j, a, i, star. And this is exactly a, j, star, b. So we rewrite it now at the sum over all j, a, e, tensor e, a, j, star, b, c, with the coefficient given by the form taken at e, comma, a, j, e. And the claim is that this is equal to a, e, tensor e, b, c. So now we sum over j on the right-hand side again, and when we sum over j, a j star times the form at e, comma, a j e, this sum is equal to e, because this is just the sum over all bases, and then the coefficients are exactly the coefficients of e. And then we use that e square is equal to e, and we get the outcome. So this is quite a non-trivial computation, but it gives the right answer. So this proves the right unitality and the left unitality is similar. And altogether, this completes the whole proof. So our bimodule Q with our multiplication mu and our unit map eta is indeed an algebra object in A mod A. Please note that the whole thing is very significantly based on the properties of the Frobenius form. Okay? Now let us talk about modules. Recall that if we have an associative K algebra A, and if M is a K vector space, then a representation of A in M is an algebra homomorphism from A to the algebra of all linear endomorphisms of M. Alternatively, the same structure can be described as the structure of a left A module on M, and this is given by a bilinear map from A times M to M, which is associative in the sense that A applied to B applied to M is equal to AB applied to M for all AB in A and M in M, and which is unital, meaning that 1 times M is equal to M for any M in M. As usual, bilinear maps can be described as linear maps from the tensor product, so from the tensor product of A, tensor product with M to M, so we denote this by linear map Psi. And now our axioms can be written as two commutative diagrams. So we have the associativity commutative diagram for Psi, just like before, but now the rightmost factor is M. And we have the unitality diagram for Psi, just like before, but now the rightmost factor is M. So this is an alternative point of view on the usual notion of a module. And now we can generalize it in the setup of an arbitrary monoidal category. So let's C be a monoidal category. Let A be an algebra in C. Definition, a left A module is a pair consisting of an object M in C and a morphism pi in C from A tensor M to M such that the following two diagrams commute. And here we have the usual associativity diagrams, just like before, and the usual left unitality diagrams, just like before. For example, the pair consisting of our algebra object A and our multiplication mu, which is a map from A tensor A to A, is a left A module. So this is called the left regular A module. Similarly, we can define the notion of a right module if C is a monoidal category and A is an algebra object in C, then a right A module is a pair consisting of an object M in C and a morphism pi in C from M tensor A to M, such that the following two diagrams commute. And we have the usual associativity diagram and the usual right unitality diagram for pi. For example, the algebra A together with multiplication mu is also a right A module, which is usually called the right regular A module. 
Now we can define the category of all A modules. Let C be a monoidal category and A be an algebra in C. Assume that we have two left A modules, m, pi and m tilde, pi tilde. Definition. A homomorphism from m to m tilde is a morphism phi from m to m tilde in C, such that the following diagram commutes. So we can start from a tensor m and use pi to go to m, and then we can use phi to go to m tilde. Alternatively, we start from a tensor m, we use phi to go to a tensor m tilde, and then we use pi tilde to go to m tilde. So this diagram should commute. For example, of course, the identity morphism on any module is an endomorphism of this module. And then, using this, one can define the category of all left A modules in C, which consists of A modules and homomorphisms between A modules. It is very easy to check that the composition of homomorphisms is a homomorphism, and we already mentioned that the identity is a homomorphism. So this category is denoted by A mod with capital M and then sub C. And similarly, we can define the category mod sub C A of all right A modules in C. Here is one very general example. Let C be a monoidal category. Then the triple consisting of the identity object I, the multiplication given by the right unitor evaluated at I, and this is equal to the left unitor evaluated at I, and then the unit map, which is given just by the identity on I, is an algebra object in C. Moreover, for any M in C, the pair M, comma, and then the left unitor evaluated at M is a left I module. Further, for any morphism phi from any M to any M prime, the diagram, the left unitor diagram for lambda and phi commutes. So if you go from I tensor M by the left unitor to M and then to, by phi to M tilde, it is the same as going from I tensor M by phi to I tensor M tilde, and then using the left unitor on M tilde to go to M tilde. And this commutes due to the naturality of lambda. This means that the category of all left modules over this algebra object, which is a unit object, is actually equal to the category C. And similarly, C also coincides with the category of all right modules over the unit object. Now let us move to the dual notion of a co-algebra. Let C be a monoidal category. Definition, a co-algebra in C is a triple consisting of an object C in C, a morphism delta in C from our object C to C tensor C, and a morphism epsilon in C from our object C to the identity object I. And this datum is supposed to satisfy the following axioms. The following three diagrams should commute. And we have the three diagrams which are exactly the opposites of the associativity and the unitality diagrams in the definition of the algebra. We just all the arrows are pointing in the opposite direction. So we have the co-associativity axioms and the co-unitality axioms. Co-algebras are also known as co-algebra objects or commonoids or commonoid objects or internal commonoids. For example, co-algebras in the category of all vector spaces are exactly the co-associative K co-algebras. Here is a variation of our previous big example. So let K be a field and let A be a finite dimensional associative K algebra. Let E be an idempotent in A. We consider the monoidal category of all finite dimensional AA bimodules and the object C in this category, which is the projective bimodule given by tensoring the left module AE with the right module EA and tensoring over K. Define the co-multiplication delta for this object by sending the element AE tensor EB in C 
to the element AE, tensor 1, tensor 1, tensor ED, in C, tensor AC. Clearly, delta is a homomorphism of AA bimodules. This is obvious just from the formula. Define the commultiplication map epsilon from C to the regular AA by module A as the multiplication map. So it sends AE tensor EB to AEB. Again, clearly, this is a homomorphism of AA by modules. And now the claim is that our by module Q, together with this commultiplication delta and the co-unit epsilon, this is a coalgebra object in A mod A. So we need to check the co-associativity and the two co-unitalities. For the co-associativity, we have the co-associativity diagram. So we start with C. We take an element AE tensor EB, and both passes of the diagram send it to AE tensor 1, tensor 1, tensor 1, tensor 1, tensor EB. So our co-multiplication just inserts 1, tensor 1 in the middle. So this is clear. And the co-unitality, so the right co-unitality, we have this diagram. And again, we start at C with the element AE tensor EB. Going up just gives us this element. So let's walk around the diagram. The co-multiplication inserts 1 tensor 1 in the middle. And then epsilon multiplies 1 and EB. So we get AE tensor 1 tensor EB and the right unitor multiplies 1 and EB again, and we get a E tensor EB. And this completes the proof. And the left unitality is similar, so the proof is complete. One can note that this example is much easier than the previous bigger example of an algebra object in the bimodule category. And all proofs are much easier. So, moreover, it works for any A and any E. We didn't assume that A is Frobenius, and we never used any Frobenius form in any computation. So this suggests that coalgebra objects in monoidal categories of bimodules are more natural or to the very least more common than algebra objects. So here is another example. So as we already seen, if you take the identity object in any monoidal category C, together with the left unitor evaluated at i and the identity on i, this is an algebra object in C. But the left unitor evaluated at i is invertible, so we can invert it, takes it inverse, and the associativity of the left unitor implies that its inverse is co-associative. Therefore, the triple of the identity, the inverse of the left unitor applied to the identity, and the identity on the identity is a coalgebra object in C. Now let us discuss left comodules over coalgebras in monoidal categories. Let C be a monoidal category, and let C, delta, epsilon be a coalgebra in C. Definition, a left C comodule is a pair n, tau, where n is an object in C, and tau is a morphism in C from n to C tensor n, such that we have the following two commutative diagrams. So we have the co-associativity diagram, where the rightmost factor is now n, and we have the left co-unitality diagram for n. For example, if we take the original coalgebra C together with co-multiplication delta, this is a left C comodule, more or less by definition, and this is called the left regular C comodule. And so we can define the category of all comodules over a coalgebra. So if you have a monoidal category and we fix a coalgebra in this, and we take two left comodules over this coalgebra, then a homomorphism from one of these comodules to the other one is a morphism in C between the underlying objects such that the following diagram commutes. We can start with n, go by phi, and then use the coaction tau tilde to go to C tensor n tilde. Alternatively, we start with n, we coact to go to C tensor n, and then we go by phi to C tensor n tilde. This should commute. And again, the trivial example is that the identity morphism is an endomorphism of any comodule. In this way, we obtain the category of all left comodules over our coalgebra C, in our monoidal category Carly seam. 
And similarly, we have the category of all right comodules over our algebra C in our monoidal category Carly C. And the question is, why do we need all this? So last time we spoke about the module categories over a monoidal category. And today we talk about algebras and coalgebras. So what is the relation? Here is the relation. Let C be a monoidal category and let A be an algebra in C. Observation, if we have a right module M comma pi over this algebra A and any object Q in C, then tensoring M on the left with Q and adjusting the morphism appropriately, so the morphism should be identity on Q tensor with pi after alpha, this pair again will be a right A module in C. So we need to check the unitality and the associativity diagrams. So here is the unitality check and the associativity will be an exercise. For the unitality, consider the following diagram. So we take the unitality axiom for M, we apply Q to it, this is the inner square, and then we rearrange the brackets to get the outer square, and then we connect them via the associator. So in this diagram, the inner square commutes because it's a unitality axiom for M. The left square commutes by the naturality of the associator. The upper square commutes by a lemma from lecture two, because here we have the right unit of Q tensor M, and here is identity on Q tensors the right unit of M. So this diagram commutes. And the lower square commutes by definition. This is exactly our adjustment for the morphism for our new module Q tensor M. So this proves that the diagram commutes and establishes the unitality axiom for our wannabe new right A module. And the associativity axiom is checked. Similarly, in other words, if we have a right A module, we can tensor it on the left with anything in C and we get a new right A module. And similarly, one checks that left tensoring with anything in C sends right A module homomorphisms to right A module homomorphisms. Corollary, the category of right A modules in C is actually a left C module category. Exactly analogously, one shows that the category of left A modules in C is a right C module category. And here we did this for an algebra A, we can do it for a coalgebra C. So if C is a coalgebra in C, then the category of right comodules over this coalgebra is a left module category over our monoidal category. And the category of left comodules over this coalgebra is a right module category over our monoidal category. Okay, let us finish with some problems and questions. Question one, show that every set can be turned into a comonoid in the monoidal category of all sets with respect to the Cartesian product in a unique way. Question two, Show that coalgebras in C are exactly the algebras in C op. So C op is the same category as C with the same tensor product, but all morphisms reversed. So this is a classical opposite category. Question three: For the left regular comodule over the coalgebra A E tensor K E A, describe all comodule endomorphisms of this comodule. Question four. Check with all detail the associativity axiom for Q tensor M in the proof of the observation on the penultimate slide. And question five, check all details in the claims that commod sub C, C is a left C module category. So the category of all right comodules over some coalgebra is a left module category over the original monoidal category. Thank you very much and see you next time.